Okay, your we now in week twelve. Your lab report due this Friday, five p.m. Huh? So and then your assignment due seventeen November, also five p.m. Okay, remember to submit your lab report and assignment on time. After five p.m., I will not uh, assume no, you are not interested. So you get zero marks uh, if uh, no submission after five p.m. Huh? Then you have your test two in uh, after you come back from the Pawali holiday, right? Uh, we'll do it on uh, Friday, week 13. Okay, recap. So your test two will cover CL3, CL4, right? So you, you have a uh, question one equation motion for rigid body. Uh, question two will be Newton law, work of energy equation, right? Rigid body. So your final exam will have uh, question one, question two, question three, and then question four and five. Today we go into the last chapter of this module. Uh, rigid body, we learn about impulse and momentum. So today we'll, we'll focus on derivation of equation, and then maybe we dis we'll discuss one question or one tutorial question, then we call it a day. Yeah. All right. Now, why do we need to this uh, learn about impulse and momentum? So one of the application is because um, all the bodies on this earth you have mass. Um, the example you see on the screen here is. A container, big ship. Um, every time when they arrive at the port, they need to turn off its engine and let the inertial impulse do its job. And most of the time, they need this small boat, we call it tug boat, to push or to guide the big ship uh, entering into the seaport. Okay, so. Um, this impulse or momentum is very important for the captain of the any ship uh, because uh, of the momentum. Huh? So the momentum. So recall what is linear momentum. What is momentum? When you take mass multiplied by velocity, you will get momentum, right? So this one you learn in uh, particle chapter also. So in this case, we will use L, capital L, to represent linear momentum. Okay. So small i means individual component. So you, if you have two, then you need to add all the momentum together. Okay. Um, to simplify our calculation, we sum up all the mass, the effect of mass, at the point of our central mass G, okay? So we will consider rigid body linear moment by using MVG, eh? velocity at center of gravity. Okay, for rigid body, we start to use capital L and then we focus on what happened at the center of mass G. Eh? Again, it is a vector quant quantity. So the unit is m uh, kilogram. Velocity is meter over second. And in your free body diagram or kinetic diagram, you always focus on the central mass, huh? G for rigid body. You've seen this diagram before. Just now is linear, a linear momentum, which is moved in a straight line or circular motion, or we call it translation motion. So if you have a rotational or angular momentum, like this one you see in the previous chapter, you need to consider this equation. Your velocity of an interest point will equal to Vp from the reference point plus the relative velocity from a reference point. Okay. So this one you learned in the previous chapter. Okay, you can use the 
top one or the middle uh, the this equation with the cross this one is you need to use the uh, matrix method to solve it all right but again it just a recall what is velocity in terms of omega and r v equal to omega r so a new notation in chapter 8 we will use this moment momentum multiplied by the arm we will get moment of moment we, re we represent with capital h uh, capital h uh, for moment of moment uh, moment of linear moment moment but uh, what not moment momentum Momentum is mv multiplied by the 90 degree arm. It's the same concept as your moment. But in this case, we look at linear momentum. So the product will be capital H, huh? capital H for rigid body. So this is angular moment. So this is when you take um, the arm multiplied by the momentum, you get HP. Is a moment of moment, a moment of linear momentum, or MOM. Right. So you can express them in a Cartesian notation. Right. It's a very long equation. Right. So HP is a uh, product. So you take the moment multiplied uh, by the arm. Okay, so mv is the arm, and this is the velocity. So i, j, and k are their notation. Then you get this form. You get minus something and something. Right. So this one you read. What is important is that at the end, you still need to see three components. Okay. So this is moment of linear momentum. H consists of three component all right so i won't ask you how to derive but the concept will be there um, so when you do your analysis your answer we expect you will have three component right one is your y multiplied uh, by the mass multiply by v right so this is mv is mv is the moment um, momentum uh, mv multiply by the uh, r or the arm you get the uh, moment of moment of linear momentum this is in y term this is in x term this one is inertial huh? is inertial All right, now this is the equation for today. This HP is H, a capital H is a linear uh, moment of linear uh, momentum or MOM. It consists of the first two plus I omega, huh? I omega. So you have minus Y prime or Y hat. This is the average Y average x multiplied by the velocity and the mass plus ip omega this is inertial okay this is inertial so if you focus you pull everything your cons your your target from a reference point to the center of gravity you cancel these two because 
y bar, y bar and x bar is zero. So at the end, you only need to consider i, g, omega. So the summary for MOM or moment of linear momentum, if you change your focus point to the center of gravity, your equation will become this simple form, Ig omega. What is how to find Ig from a table? Huh? From a table. Um, the rest you read. Again, you recall what how to find the I from the previous chapter. I is the moment of uh, is the initial. I O equal to I G plus M D square. So apply here. So if you are looking at M O M or capital H or moment of linear momentum. You need to consider IO equal to IG. In this case, we, because we refer to the diagram, the diagram referring to point P, so we change the O to P, IG plus MD squared. This is a distance from the reference point to the center of, of center of mass. But the concept still there, right? IO equal to IG plus MD squared. Okay. So this is a bit lengthy equation, a bit lengthy equation. If I just derive from I equation and this equation. Huh? So uh, no choice. You, have, uh, you, you can memorize this one or this one. Huh? When you come to last chapter uh, solution. Okay, so since some of you, you are very weak in IJK multiplication, this one I will skip. But at the end, you arrive at this one. Eh? You're still seeing the same form, right? You're still seeing the same form. This one I will skip, eh? this one you will read. Um, try to familiar with the structure of the equation. MOM or capital H, linear of momentum, equal to MV multiplied by the arm. Okay, MV is the momentum multiplied by the arm, but you calculate moment, right? But in this case, it's not force. We now it changed to momentum already. So momentum in Y direction, momentum in X direction, is two plus the inertial effect, IG omega. Okay, as long as you remember this structure, then you are fine. Okay. So the rest you read. So um, this is a general equation. It depends on the type of motion. Translation, translation, what becomes zero? When your object doing translation, what becomes zero? This in this equation, what becomes zero? And why? Okay. This equation, the one on the top, if you only have translation, what terms become zero and why? You understand what this all this thing means, right? You understand what is omega, right? What is omega? Huh? Angular what? Velocity. 
What do you mean by angular velocity? Huh? Rotation. Translation got rotation or not? So if during translation, this one becomes zero because it's not rotate. Translation move in straight line or collinear line without change of orientation. Okay. Rotation above fixed axis. Yes, ah. Uh. Rotation above a fixed axis, it tells you fixed axis already. Fixed axis, y bar, x bar, um, sometimes become zero, but sometimes it can be have some value depend on position. But they will sure have uh, omega terms here. General plane, use the full equation. Yeah. So, or in summaries, translation, you only see this term. Rotation, you only, sorry. Translation, you see the first two terms. Rotation, you see the behind one. General plane, the full equation. Okay. Ah. This one, y bar, x bar, you only learn in your statics how to find the y bar, x bar of the full body. Okay, or inside the table, already can find how to find x bar, y bar. Okay. Ah. Okay, now this is just a, a recap of what I mentioned just now. If you're doing translation, again, you're still focusing on the central mass, that is a capital G point. Your moment, your moment, how to find moment, uh, how to find momentum, m multiplied by g, but this one you focus on the center of gravity. Right. So because this is translation, you don't have angular motion, omega zero. Okay. So your you have a linear momentum but you don't have angular momentum huh? at the center of mass. Okay. Why zero? Why there's no two terms here? Why your x bar, y bar is zero? Why? Why your x bar, y bar is zero at center of mass? Yeah, because it's at the center of the body. That's why this one also zero, this one zero, your HG become zero. Yeah. So to solve chapter eight, actually it's quite simple. You move all your interest point to center of gravity. You will cancel lots of things. And then everything refer to the capital G point. So it depends where you refer to. If you refer to center of uh, gravity, center of mass, your angular momentum will be zero, right? If you refer to A here, then there is a moment happen because of this momentum. Okay. So again, the concept of moment apply. Moment, uh, the one that you study in static is force multiplied by distance. That is moment. Also apply in particle chapter. But when you come to rigid body, you are no longer look at the force. You look at the momentum. Okay, momentum is mv multiplied by the perpendicular distance. You get the angular momentum, huh? angular momentum, or moment of linear momentum, capital H at the reference point A, right? What about rotation? Okay, now rotation, they will sure have omega. And we still look at the center of mass. Center of mass, if you rotate, there will be a velocity. Now in this case, by now you should able to draw the vector direction for velocity of a rotating body, no matter what is the shape. If this is your rotating body, 
they sure have a central mass. Let's say omega in this direction. You should able to draw the V for any point on this body. Okay, omega move in a circular motion. So when you circular motion, your V always tangent to the curve. Ah, so V here, V here is different. Eh? This V and this V is different. On the rigid body, V at this point and this point is different. Eh? Why? Because rigid body, V equal to omega R. Where is your R? From a reference point. If you want to calculate this V, you need to use the same omega multiplied by this R. Here to here. 90 degree. Okay, and use right hand rules. Okay, right hand rules. This one positive omega. Okay, this one you have to multiply by this capital R, this length. Then you get V2. Yeah, uh, so don't confuse with the V and omega. Omega always same for the whole body, rigid body. Yeah. Okay, so in this case, to, to simplify all our calculation, we focus on central mass, G. And if we take V multiply by, uh, if you want to find omega, omega equal to, uh, V equal to omega R. If you want to find omega, you just need to pull your R to the left. V divided by R, you get your omega. Okay, or normally you'll be given omega. So you just need to multiply the, by the radius or perpendicular radius to the velocity. In this case, if you're given omega, you should able to find your V by take the reference point O to R, you get your V. Then you sure have a mass for the body. So multiply by the mass, you get your momentum. MV, momentum, labeled as capital L. And because of this momentum, you sure have a moment of momentum, a mom moment of moment momentum or H. So you take this one, multiply by this R, or you can straight away find Ig omega. Okay. So if you focus on the center of mass, your linear momentum will be mv. Angular mom momentum will be Ig omega. How to find Ig? Look at the table. Okay. So if you refer, again, if you refer, if you change your interest point from the center of mass to another point, then you have two terms here, Ig omega plus R, MVR. Yeah. So if you change from here, change from here, you only see this one. If you focus on center of gravity, you only see Ig omega. If you move your interest point to O, then there are two moment reaction. One is this moment, and another one is because of this one, multiplied by this one, you get another moment. So there are two moments here. If you switch your interest point from central mass to O. So that's why you see two terms here. Ig omega plus mv multiplied by R. Okay, now we're focusing on the concept of moment here. or you can combine together, factor them out, you will still see the same omega. Because why? How you find this, this term? V equal to omega R. That's why you see R square here. Yeah. Uh, so for chapter eight, it's good practice to convert your V to omega R. Okay, so this is just a, uh, um, if you use parallel axis theorem that you learned in uh, chapter six, chapter seven, you can 
directly use IO. IO equal to what? IG plus MD squared multiplied by the angular velocity. Okay, so there are two. Uh. Either you use this one or straight away this one. This in the form IG plus MD squared. This is IO. IO equal to IG plus MD squared. What is your D? Is the distance between your central mass to the interest of point. This is your D. Yeah. So nothing changed here. It just add on and add on. Uh, in today, our interest is more on the momentum or moment. Moment of the momentum. Huh? So we have done the translation, rotation, then we combine two. When we combine two, we will see two things. One is linear momentum. Again, linear momentum, as long as it's rotate, you will sure have velocity. So we have mv, center of gravity. Angular moment, you have ig plus omega. Okay. Again, what is ig? ig, if you look at the center of gravity, then it's ig. But if you pull your interest point from center of mass to a, then you'll be seeing it become IO already. IO means uh, you need to do IG plus MD square equation only. Okay, so this one, you be, if you change your interest point to another point other than central mass, this one become your interest point already. Then this one become IO, IO equal to IG plus MD square multiplied by omega. Omega doesn't change huh, for the rigid body. So again, if you move your interest point from G to A, then you'll be seeing IO plus omega, uh, I, IO multiplied by omega or IG plus MD squared. Uh, where's my T here? Yeah? Uh, where is another D? Here. Because why? Your V is omega R. V is omega R, you still arrive at you if you simplify this one, it's still I omega, but it's an IO, IO equal to IG plus MD squared. The D here now become the R or the D, it depends on the situation. Okay. Uh, sometimes you can use IC to calculate. Okay. You know how to find IC. La. So in this case, yeah, you only have one point. So sometimes it's quite hard to find where is your interest point. Yeah? Okay, so this is a pendulum stream that word is a pendulum analysis. So pendulum, you know that you have something swing from one way to another way. So let's say you're interested in this arm and all the object will show have a, in, a central mass. Central mass will do rotational half way, the blue color. Uh, okay, the blue color actually is the, the rotation angular motion. So the velocity always perpendicular to the circle, right? So you have velocity G. When you multiply with mass, you get the momentum. Okay, then this is a D, then this is Ig omega because of the rotation or inertial effect. Uh, so for rigid body, always remind yourself that you need to consider the effect of mass and set uh, inertia. Okay, so if you want to calculate this pendulum case and you focus on O, you focus on O of this object, then your show have two things. One is IG omega, or you can put straight away calculate IO omega, and you calculate IO equal to IG plus MD square. Uh, if you forget how to write this one, just write H equal to I omega. And, and this, because it's this one, the interest point is outside the central mass, is at O. So you need to use your IO equal to IG plus MD squared, the distance from the central mass. Uh, okay, so the rest is just a derivation. Uh, 
or to summarize chapter 8, if you want to calculate MOM or moment of linear momentum, just type H and is a uh, uh, right hand rules. Uh. It's also following right, right hand rules. Anti clockwise positive equal to I omega. H equal to I omega. So we look at example one, then we uh, continue on Friday. Huh? Okay, so this is a simple case. There's a rod drop from a, uh, a slanted 30 degree. You are given a mass of a rod, given the central of a mass at four meter, uh, not four meter. Um, okay, four meter is the length. All right. Um, determine the angular moment, uh, angular momentum. Angular momentum is a concept of moment. Eh? Angular momentum is just concept of moment. Angular momentum is actually H. Eh? Is your capital H. So H equal to I omega. It depends. If you look at center of gravity, then it becomes center of gravity. If it's at the center, it's other point other than center of mass, this one becomes IO. How to find IO? IO equal to IG plus MD square. How to find IG? Refer to table. Okay, so you have a mass given. VA move downwards at a 30 degree. And you need to find angular momentum at point G and also IC at the, at the instance. So you have two methods or two approach. Okay, so we need to analyze how what kind of motion you have. You have translation, rotation, and general. In this case, it involves two, translation and also rotation. Okay, what I mean by translation? It move from here, uh, move from when you rotate this one, will this one will move here? Point A will move down, and the whole rod will rotate. So you draw the free body diagram of the rod. Then you have point A and point B. You should able to draw the velocity of point A. Point A is pointing down straight. Okay. What is the velocity of B? Moving to where? Your A moves through, huh? Zero, man? Ah, B, B, B. B, how come zero? When it drop, will it have movement? When you push, when you push this one, will B move on? To the left. Okay, because this is a flat surface. And this one drop, this one will move to the left. Okay. All right. Then, where is the direction of your central mass? Your central mass also move, right? This G point also move. Where is the direction? Move down. You find out, huh? Okay, now you should already know when I draw all this line, you should already know how I draw it, right? You put your ruler, put your ruler over here. If you, if you, if you can, you can move your, your V to here, lah, actually, you can move your V over here. Then use your ruler, draw one line, then this one like that, then put your ruler, draw up. Uh, you should know uh, the direction of drawing uh, like this and this and not to down. Uh, it's moving up. Uh. Okay. So you must follow your ruler. Uh. So this one go here. Your ruler draw here. This one you can move down a little bit. This one you move down. You follow your ruler. So this is your IC point. When you have IC point, 
you can calculate uh, trigonometry. Uh, it's straight 90 degree. Uh. You have 4 meter here. You have 90 degree. You are given 30 degree here. You should be able to find what is the R, what is the R, what is the R here. Okay. Your G is a vector. Your velocity of the G is the vector. Okay. Your G, it will rotate like that. Okay, it will rotate like that. Okay. Or you move here, it will rot rotate like that. So it's 90 degree to the IC point. Put in all the value. Okay. Uh, so if you're weak in uh, trigonometry or angle, need to practice. Uh. Sometimes you need to think about the angle. You put in all the angle, then you can start calculation already. Okay, the total length is four. The location of center of mass will be two and two from the both end. Okay. So the top here will be four meter cos 30. The angular velocity will be rotating at the IC point in this direction because the rod rotate like that. So by using your prime rules, this one omega actually going in. So again, if you see this equation, you should be able to understand uh, how you find this one, omega. V equal to omega R. So you have your V, you have your R. You want to find omega. Just move your R to the left hand side of the equation. V equal to omega R. Move your R to the left. So you take your V divided by R. Okay. This is V. This is R. V and R always 90 degree, like what I draw on the whiteboard. V and R always 90 degree. Okay, then you find your omega. You find find one value. Once you find your omega, you apply for the whole body. Uh, or in short, for chapter eight question solution, every time you you when the question if the question give you omega, it can solve most of the time. If cannot, then you need to find the omega. Once you find omega, you can. You can calculate the rest already. For example, the velocity at all the points. In this case, we calculate the velocity at the center of gravity. Uh, v equal to omega r. Once you find your g, then you can find your angular momentum is moment of linear momentum or mo moment MOM, angular momentum. So in short, you just write H equal to I omega. In this case, you're focusing on point G. So you write HG equal to IG omega. How to find IG refer to table. Okay, table will show you half 12 M uh, L, M L square. Okay, that one you refer to the table, and it was is available to you uh, on Canvas to download uh. So get familiar with the 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 table. Omega you define. So your H is equal to some value kilogram meter square per second direction. It give you. Uh, this one is anticlockwise. Okay.
So once you have that, then you have G already, G equal to I G, uh, at point G equal to H I omega. If you want to find IC point, means you change your O into IC, O equal to I G M D square, right? IC is over here. So this is the, the D that you want to find. Okay. So this, you can write in this long form, or you can straight away write IC, then IC equal to IG plus MD squared. Uh, you can skip this one by writing I, IC, omega. Then write what is your IC? I, IC. I, IC equal to IG plus MD squared. Then you calculate, you substitute inside. Uh, okay. How to find IG? Again, refer to table. Table will show you. You're looking at uh, this one, uh, IG, center of uh, gravity, uh, center of mass here. All right. And what is the D? D is 2. Huh? And you will get the value also. Okay. This is a short, short. A uh, quick one. Uh, I I always like to use this method. Uh. Okay. So this is IC. Uh, again, what is IC? You move from the center of mass already. So you use IG plus MD square. So here, IG plus MD square. This is D. D is a distance from the center of mass. No matter, uh, this one, it can change from IC or other point. Uh. Uh, if this one change to B, then same. If the question asks you the angular momentum from B, same. Change this one to IG plus MD square, but this one change to B. Where is the distance from G to B? Uh, you calculate. Uh. You substitute this one as the D here. Multiply by omega, you get answer already. If the question change from A, angular momentum about A, so same, you write H A equal I A omega. I A is what? I A equal to this one change to A, I G plus M D squared. So this is the distance from A to the center of mass. Substitute, you get the answer already. You can either memorize this one or this one, but I will I will always prefer this one. This one faster. This one, but both get the same answer. It's just that this one a bit lengthy, a bit. And sometimes you might confuse here. Okay, so today only one equation only. Eh? Angular momentum H equal to I omega. How to find I? It depends on central mass or other interest point. If you change other interest point, you need to use IO equal to IG plus MD squared. Substitute into omega. Then how to find omega? V equal to omega R. From the diagram, you already know how to find V and R. If this one rotate certain way, circular motion, there's a velocity. Okay, Velocity always perpendicular from a point. Okay, uh, so don't confuse. Uh, don't always confuse your V at the rigid body. Always same. No, uh, only same is the omega. V will change based on the in based on the distance from the interest point. Okay. Okay. So this one will conclude. Uh, not conclude lah, but it will give you some idea. What is chapter eight about? Uh, right. So next Friday, we will do principle. Huh? Principle, then we conclude chapter eight. And you're ready for your final exam already. Huh? Okay, there are some deadlines. Please uh, take note. Huh? Your lab report.